What looks better, sharpening in camera or in editing? This was the subject of an old video that I put out, which was pretty popular. Jeez, look at my hair. And a viewer recently suggested doing an update and I thought, well, yeah, it's been a minute. The technology has changed and moved on. I thought that was a spiffing idea. So I had questions. What looks better, sharpening in body, in camera or in editing? Should we sharpen ever? If so, when? And if that's the case, what software does it best? I've timestamped everything in this video so you can just skip to the bits you want. I'm also on the long winding path to 100,000 subscribers, so if you could take a second to hit that subscribe button, it would really mean a lot to me. Uh, it helps the channel to grow and, um, you know, it would make my day. So thank you in advance. This video is not sponsored, but it is made possible by my Patreon backers. The idea with that is any funds from Patreon I put back into the channel to buy gear and then I give the gear to my backers. If that's of interest, if you want to win some gear and support the channel, you know, down below. Let's get on with it. So I started by re-watching my old video and as cringy as that video was, the very loose conclusion I had was that if you think you're going to need to apply sharpening, do it in camera. But of course, times have changed and no one does this anymore. So let's take a fresh look. So I chose to use my Sony a7 IV, which as we know, has something near to a 7K sensor downscaled to 4K. This means we should have plenty of detail to work with, and this is a really modern sensor at the time of filming. Here it is with the detail set to minus seven, and this is how I normally do it. I think this is how most video guys shoot. So this is the benchmark. Switching to zero, and I can barely see any difference. That is without zooming in, which we're gonna do of course, but first let's have a look at plus seven detail. That's full if you're not aware. And I feel like in the past, this would look horrendous looking at the full image, but I really don't think it looks that bad at all. I dare say I could have even shot some footage like this and not even realized that I had the detail on the wrong setting. Taking a look at these three side by side, you can see what I'm talking about. Yes, plus seven is definitely sharper looking than minus seven, but compared to how things used to be, this is quite a change. So we have to zoom in. So I zoomed in by a lot. And here, finally, we can see the differences. And I have to say, plus seven still not looking bad at all. Obviously, I prefer the softer look of minus seven, but this was really interesting to me to see. So then I applied an instance of just the basic sharpening plugin within Final Cut, and here are the results versus the plus seven clip. And for me, the plus seven clip is by far the winner here, with the sharpening plugin version looking just brittle. It's also adding quite a bit of contrast, which you might not necessarily want. So when is the time to use sharpening, if indeed ever? I feel like back in the day, it was so common to use it, but now we've got 4K, 8, 16 even. I just feel like it's not really the done thing and when would you use it? Maybe, I don't know, if you're doing a little bit of live streaming, you might put on a touch in camera. You could add a touch, maybe if you're using really dreamy vintage lenses, but then doesn't that defeat the point a little? You could, you know, use it for an effect, you know, as a stylistic choice to add kind of grit to whatever you're filming. Finally, if, God forbid, you have one of those kind of just missed focus shots on something that you can't recreate and, you know, that you've got no option but to go to a sharpening plugin, let's investigate. And here is my just missed focus shot. And if we zoom in, you can see I have just missed focus intentionally. And here it is in comparison to the minus seven clip. And yeah, definitely out of focus. So let's try some plugins and see if I can save this because I think clearly that is what they're best used for these days. Starting off again with the stock sharpening plugin from Final Cut versus the original missed focus shot. And I'm not loving the look of this, it's adding quite a bit of noise. But of course our aim here is to get our footage looking more normal. So let's compare it instead to the minus seven detail clip. It's not horrendous, but I think we can do better. Next we have M Film Look from Motion VFX, which is a fantastic all-in-one plugin. And this is the sharpening module from it. And whilst it is doing quite a good job of sharpening, it is adding a lot of noise and it kind of 
looks a little like film grain. Next, we have the sharpening plugin from Eric Lenz, and this, to me, is doing a phenomenal job. It's based on the sharpening that you'd get in Adobe Lightroom. And it's great because it gives you way more control. You've got control over the intensity, obviously, the radius of the sharpening, and then the masking, just like you get in Adobe Lightroom. And that's why we've got this sharpening effect, but without the noise. And then again, looking at the full frame, yes, it looks slightly out of focus, but you can see it almost looks like the plane of focus has shifted onto the Terry's Chocolate Orange, and you can see my buddy Ziltoid in the back still out of focus. This has to be my choice of these three plugins. I think it's doing a stellar job. Now, from where I am in the UK, even here, I can hear people typing the letters T-O-P-A-Z. And of course, I'm not going to miss out on talking about Topaz Video AI. Let's do that now. So jumping into Video AI, and before we start, I just wanted to say I have no affiliation with Topaz and no relationship whatsoever. There will be no links below or anything like that. I bought what I think is fairly overpriced software with my own cash purely for this kind of experimental video. That is it. But anyway, under the Enhancement tab, you can see there's a feature called Focus Fix. And when I click on the standard setting, you can see that it says it's designed specifically for HD and UHD footage where you've slightly missed focus. And that's exactly what we've got here. One other thing to note is that because of the nature of this process where it downscales, then upscales in order to find edges and you know recover detail, you are fixed with the resolution that you put in. You can't upscale to say 8K at the same time. You'd probably have to do that in a separate process. I then exported, which you know does take a very long time. Let's not beat around the bush and is kind of one of the disadvantages of Topaz. I have some files to compare and this is the original missed focus shot. And this is what it looked like once it had gone through that focus fix processing. And eyeballing the full frame, it does look sharper for sure. But zooming in, we can see just what it's doing. It's not introducing any noise. It doesn't look particularly unnatural. By far, this is the best of the external software that I have tried. You might be wondering how it compares to the Eric Lenz sharpening plugin. Well, here they are side by side. Definitely a little bit more smeary and I'm not sure how this would look, you know, looking at the full frame, but certainly zoomed in, the Topaz looks better to me. Comparing it to the original minus seven detail clip, the Topaz doesn't look as good. Obviously there is less detail, but man, it's close. However, something I've noticed that I don't think I've heard anyone else talk about is how once your footage has passed through Topaz's processing, some strange things happen with the color. And in this example, you know, it's definitely not as pronounced as if you were doing upscaling, but you can see I've pulled up the RGB parade waveform and there are small differences in the reds but far more pronounced differences when you look at the green and the blues, and these equate to some color shifts. Like I said, I've seen this more when doing upscaling, and I will be doing videos about this, but really is something that needs to be kept in mind when using Topaz. So for me, the best of the plugin versions was the Eric Lenz sharpening plugin. Like a lot of what Eric does, this is based on the tools that you get in Adobe Lightroom. That's kind of Eric's thing. He makes plugins that closely emulate what you get in Lightroom. He's even done clarity, dehaze, texture plugins for Final Cut, which are totally just crazy. I've done reviews of those, which I will link below where I go into depth on um, those products. So of course the overall winner has to be the focus fix function within Topaz, which downscales your footage and then upscales it again in order to find detail and um, you know recover detail and find edges and that kind of thing. It's so clever, but bear in mind it does require that you leave your NLE, which you know not everyone will want to do with as part of their workflow. And then there's the processing times, which can be hideous. And what I normally recommend is that people just leave it running overnight because, you know, they can take that long. The reason I recommend that is that it's, it's not just the time it takes. You know, you can't just, you know, leave it running in the background because it is fairly processor hungry. So it might affect whatever else you're working on at the time. So it's just the best way to do it. There's also the slight color shifting that I noticed from my process clips, but you know what? That is a video for another day. Uh, so now let's take everything that we've learned in this video and grind it up 
and make a tasty espresso of tips to take away. Unequivocally and unsurprisingly, it looks better adding sharpening in body for the Sony a7 IV anyway, than in editing using a sharpening plugin. That doesn't mean you should, of course. The issue with adding things in camera is that you really don't know when you're gonna need it and if. Traditional sharpening plugins really need applying delicately as they can introduce noise and look a little brittle. For me, Eric Lenz's sharpening plugin was the best of the plugin versions that I tested. The radius and masking controls meant that I could really fine tune things to look pretty good. However, Topaz takes the prize for the best overall for recovering detail. Just remember the workflow side of things might not suit everyone, plus it is possible to see a little bit of color shifting. The overall takeaway should be that these processes are best used on things like those just missed focus shots and perhaps in the other situations I mentioned as well. Otherwise we have enough detail. So on the whole I'd be happy if I never needed to use a sharpening plugin again. We've just got so much resolution from our sensors these days and modern lenses regardless of price seem to resolve tons of detail. Like for example I recently reviewed this Viltrox 20mm. It's a $150 lens. It's super cheap but the detail it can resolve is just crazy. And this is, by the way, being given given away at the moment via my Patreon. It's one of three bits of uh, gear. This one, I've got another light and one other, oh, a lav microphone. It's worth about $800 in, in total. So yeah, giveaways, it's all down there. Many thanks to the viewer who suggested this video. You know who you are. And I listen to you guys and I really appreciate your comments. So do please, you know, suggestions down below. I do read them. Anyway, that's it for now. I just hope you found this video interesting and helpful. Do you, you agree? What did I miss? Definitely let me know. I'll be down in the comment section as much as I can. I'll see you down there. I've now made hundreds of videos about videography and audio of which the algorithm has chosen this video for you to watch next and the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys. <laughs>